Path of Exile 3.12 is Heist League, where we're going to be infiltrating enemy bases and trying to get some fat loot, including a ton of currency, interesting new uniques, as well as some changed uniques that we've known for many years. And what better way to start the league than with a zoom zoom clear build that also does pretty insane single target, has some really solid defensive layers, and doesn't cost almost anything to get all the way through the entirety of the game. This is Poison Blade Vortex Assassin. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome back to the channel. Poison Blade Vortex is one of my favorite builds from Harvest League. It has pretty much everything that you could ever want. It's got really solid clear, it has insane single target, a ton of defensive layers, you almost never die on this build, between massive amounts of dodge, like I think that we actually get dodge and spell dodge cap, um, the fact that we take less damage when we haven't been hit recently, a ton of effective health pool, I think we can get up to around 6k on this build, and on a huge amount of dodge build, 6k is actually pretty solid. This build has a ridiculous amount of recovery, I mean, as long as you're killing things, you're pretty much topped off at maximum health, and for bosses and other things like that, we've still got Enduring Cry, which, even past the nerf, is still perfectly fine for this build. If you're looking for a League Start build that doesn't cost almost anything to get going, is able to do some pretty solid clear all the way up into tier 16 maps, and can absolutely melt bosses, this might be the one for you. Now remember guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like this video so that more people can see it. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this. And without further ado, let's take a look at a little bit of the leveling and then see a couple of things that we did and then we'll get into the guide. And yeah, there's plenty of League mechanics that rain fossils, but not as much anymore. Like during Delirium League, fossils were abundant and that was fine. But ever since then, Deliriums aren't as, as often as we kind of thought they would be. They're kind of, they're kind of random, you know? Like, I, I don't feel like they're as often as they, we might have thought. It's time to get Seer Rius. This should be interesting. I haven't, I haven't actually done Sirius on this build in quite some time. That pun was seriously bad. So this is Sirius 8. This is Awakener level 8. So this is as hard as Sirius possibly gets. Oop, did I just walk outside? I moved too fucking fast, dude. Pretty easy. Yo, why you gotta be like right on the edge, dude? I'm gonna accidentally walk out of the zone. There you go, I stood in a die beam for you. We survived a single tick of the die beam. Yeah, I mean, as long as I don't lose him, it's not too hard on this build. Okay. Yep, alright. So that right there, that's by far the most dangerous moment in the entirety of the fight, is that little moment right there, when he does the die beam right immediately after respawning. Other than that, the fight's pretty easy. Alright. Here we go. Alright, we, we dodge the spears. There, we dodge the big spears too. Alright, where is the mirror? There's the mirror. Oh, that was a terrible idea. Holy fuck, that was a terrible idea. Why would I put down fucking Volblade Vortex? Please be nice to me, Volblade Vortex. <laughs> oh, that was such a terrible idea. What the fuck was I thinking? Holy shit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the thank you for the thank you for the 100 bit distraction. All right, where's the shield? I don't see it. Fuck, I don't I don't know where the shield is. I have no idea. Uh, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where it's at. Is it that one? I think it has to be that one. There you go, Uber at Ziri then. So the big thing about Uber Elder in particular is just being able to manage all of the stuff happening while um, while doing enough damage. 
So the thing that's gonna hurt here, oh god, the thing that's gonna hurt here is gonna be Elder himself. It depends on if the Elder's abilities hit me very hard. Okay, so that hurts quite a bit. I actually think Withering Step might get me killed here. <laughs> I'm moving too fast. Like, legit. I'm moving so fast that it's actually hard for me to control the character sometimes. Could have died there if I wouldn't have dodged. I have so little room to move. You're really just gonna sit right inside of him, Elder? Is this is this how we're gonna do this? <laughs> what is this? Oh, I didn't die there? Oh, come on. Yo, game, please. You're being a little rough to me with the placement of this stuff, dude. Oh, he's sucking me. Like, they, they are placing these abilities very poorly for me. Uh, thank you, dodges. I love you. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, so much room to move. I don't know where Shaper is. Oh, don't fucking suck me, dude. Okay, Shaper should be dead. Low on mana. Elder should be dead. Okay. Yo, you're dead, dude. All right. All right, not too. All right, where's my items? And it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, even with me just like sloppy, just tossing myself in there, I did it. Like, it wasn't that bad. Like, the thing about it is, is that the build does enough damage, as you can see, that it's just whatever. All right, so this is the Poison Blade Vortex Assassin. Now, this build is one of my favorites, actually. We played this more than any other build in Harvest League. It does pretty insane damage, and when you really get going, yeah, you can zoom around the map pretty fast. Now this build mainly revolves around poison damage, and what poison damage does is it's based off of physical and chaos damage that you deal, and it causes a stacking debuff, and I think our current poison damage lasts for about 10 seconds. Now this build, I've invested very little into the gear on this build. This really doesn't require a lot of money. Cold iron points are typically like 5 chaos at most. Um, the devouring diadem is the most expensive piece of this entire build. Um, this helmet can be pretty expensive early on in the league, but it's not required. If you don't have this, just run one less aura. Other than that, it's fine. Random six link chest piece. This isn't anything special. I actually just crafted this myself. And then a bunch of just random rares. Um, this ring I harvest crafted, but you could actually make this ring with just like some ailment uh, fossils or something. However, they're changing them. I'm not exactly sure. But you could just use some fossils and you could definitely make a ring like this or even make a better one. Yeah, just cold iron points, random six link chest piece. Um, we don't have too many crazy jewels. Um, just life damage, life damage. Um, there's not really anything insane here. For my cluster jewel, I'm literally just using a medium crit cluster jewel just so that I can get overwhelming malice. You just need to get this on something, right? We crit enough that this is up 24 seven. We don't have to worry about it. And there's nothing else to the build. It's, it's very cheap. All of this gear, um, as long as you're not counting the devouring diadem very early in the league, all of this gear cost me around 50 C. I bought this diadem when it was around 15 to 20 C or so. This chess piece I got for around 25. The rest of it was just random stuff that I either found or bought. It really, there's nothing special here. All right, so we're gonna do a tier 16 map. Um, this is going to be a tier 16 overgrown shrine. It's got vulnerability, elemental weakness, negative max res, monsters move, attack, and cast faster. We're on tier 16 in Awakener level eight. We're also going to be running this 
this as a Legion map, and we're gonna put Einhar on there. So you kind of get an idea of how the build actually plays. So the main way that this build works is that we cast Unleash Blade Vortex, which means that it's going to cast multiple Blade Vortexes at a time, and we stack poison damage through Blade Vortex. Now, Blade Vortex is an ability that just kind of surrounds you with some spinning blades and they hit a certain amount of times. Um, the hit rate currently on this is around seven and a half times a second, according to Path of Building. Um, so we're stacking quite a few poisons. Now, poison is one of those things in Path of Exile where you can legitimately stack some pretty insane damage, um, especially on single target. With very little investment, I mean, we're at like 50C that I think I invested into this character, and that was relatively early in the league. We're doing like 8 million-ish DPS, and it's, it's not too hard to get there, right? So one thing that a lot of people complain about in this build is going to be the clear. Now, Explodey Chest did solve a lot of that. However, some people really aren't gonna be able to get that in the next league. So what I wanna tell most of those people is that Plague Bearer is more than fine for clear. You're not gonna have any issues. The cool thing about Plague Bearer as well, um, it's this poison little aura that you see pop out there, is that it replenishes itself almost instantly. When you actually get to maps and you start doing some pretty serious damage, you will stack, ooh, that was really close. You can kind of see the recovery of a build. Um, I think that was Porcupines that did that. Too bad we don't have the Explodey Chest anymore. The, the Explodey Chest actually solves that problem. But you can kind of see that when you pop out Plague Bearer, it's AoE clearing no problem without us even doing anything, right? Like you don't have to do anything extra. It just is going to immediately, look at that. We pop straight back to full. Like rewind the video a little bit and check out the, uh, the number up at the top left if you didn't see how quickly that went back to full. But single target damage is amazing. Clear is pretty solid, especially on these like, like smaller linear maps. You can pretty much clear without any backtracking whatsoever. You just run through the map at full, at full speed. Now, this build also does some pretty solid single target. Now, I let my Plague Bearer run out, so we're not gonna have anything special here. It's just gonna be Flask, and I'm gonna pop cooldowns here. So, you can see that starting out, the DPS isn't great, but as you sit on the boss, you can start to see how much damage it actually ramps up. As you sit and stack those poisons up and get them going, you are legitimately going to do some absolutely massive DPS. Now, this build, is one of my favorite bossers of all time. You can use Enduring Cry to just help sustain yourself in between boss hits. When we have our Elusive going, let me see here if I can find it. So defenses, chance to dodge is 40 and 30. When we have our Elusive going, oh, I don't have my Flask going. It would have been at around 75, 75 there. But you can kind of see that when we do pop our Elusive, we're at 40 and 30, pop our Elusive and we're at 64 and 54. That gets increased by another 10% there. So. On top of everything else, really, really powerful build. All right, so now that you've seen a little bit of what the build is capable of, let's talk a bit about the basics of it. Now, I, I talked before about how Blade Vortex works, but you're gonna see that there's a couple stacks here. Now, Blade Vortex is actually pretty hard to keep 10 stacks of. It normally can only go to 10 stacks. There was a point in the past where it was able to go to 50 stacks, but those days are no longer. Now we have a maximum stack of 10. Now to keep that up adequately, we're going to be using the Unleash support. And what this means is that you only actually have to cast Blade Vortex every few seconds. You don't have to cast it that often. It's just every couple seconds, you just pop it again, and it will stay at 10. If you keep looking at that number up at the top left, I'm only casting every two or three seconds and it will stay at around 10 stacks. Now you do maximum D DPS while you're at 10 stacks, but you also need to make sure that you're utilizing Plague Bearer to clear. There isn't a lot of mechanics of this build that you really need to worry too much about. We stack Wither through our Withering Step. This is just a little circle that'll spawn around your character, and when you use an ability next to an enemy or when a enemy enters the area, they're going to obtain six wither debuffs. This is typically enough to keep max wither stack on bosses as long as you're actively managing it. But the build itself survives off of one thing. The main recovery mechanic of this build is Noxious Strike. Now you're going to see the line here that says recover 0.5% of life per poison affecting enemies that you kill. So we are poisoning seven times per second per enemy that we're hitting. So if you think about if you just kill one enemy, and it takes you one second to kill them. That is at minimum seven poisons. So just that one enemy is going to make you recover 3.5% of your life, just that one enemy, and that's if it dies in one second. If it takes four seconds to kill, you're going to quadruple the amount of health. So you can only imagine, I mean, you saw on the map there a minute ago how I went down to like 0.1% health because I took a huge hit because the, what were the mods on this map? It was something ridiculous. I can't even remember at this point, let's check. 
the mods on this map were Ellie weakness, vulnerability, negative max res, and a bunch of movement speed. So I I almost got one one shot there, right? But immediately it popped straight back up to full health because of that recovery. Now there's also some extra stuff that does here. Mistwalker gives us elusive. It also increases the chance for us, or rather increases the effectiveness of elusive. Um, you take no extra damage from critical strikes, that's pretty nice. And then we have Opportunistic, which helps us with bosses. And Toxic Delivery also gives us uh, the ability to scale crit for our poison on top of the keystone that we obtain from our flask, which is Perfect Agony. You'll see here that Coralito's Signature gives you Perfect Agony during flask effects, so we don't actually need to take this on the tree. Coralito's Signature is really solid. Now, the thing that you need to be thinking about when playing this build is you'll see that I have a couple poison nodes here, right? The main thing that you need to worry about while leveling and while doing everything else is focusing on keeping 100% chance to poison. We get that through Noxious Strike, we get that through these poison nodes here, we get that through Coralito's Signature, and we also get that through these nodes here. That gives us 100% chance to poison, as well as our Herald of Agony. All of those things combined allow us to poison every single time that we hit, meaning that we can inflict an insane amount of poisons recently, and this helps us scale our damage. Something that you're going to notice is that 5% increased poison duration for each poison you have inflicted recently. Now you remember what I said. So we have a 7.5 hits per second, according to Path of Building, of course, and recently means four seconds. So that means that we are doing 30 poisons per four seconds on just a single target. So we're getting 30 times five, that's going to be, I can't do math right now because my brain's not working, 150%. 150% increased poison duration just from our one enemy that we're killing. So tons of damage, all kinds of good stuff for this build. Doesn't require any gear. Like I said, this is just random chest piece, devouring diadem, some cheap, uh, some cheap daggers that don't cost anything and just some random stuff here. Now let's talk a little bit about leveling. Now leveling this build is kind of interesting because you can go back to my previous build guide that I made of this and you can see that I did, um, I did like a leveling method where you use elemental blade vortex while leveling. However, I've kind of updated that a little bit and now we're actually going to be leveling with a bow. I think that this is significantly better. And when you first begin leveling with the build, you're gonna be grabbing caustic arrow. Now you're gonna get this as soon as you get to town. I think you might have to buy it. I'm not 100% certain, but you might have to buy it from uh, Nessa or whatever her name is. But you're gonna grab caustic arrow. Now the cool thing about caustic arrow is that this scales kind of like the other chaos damage over time spells. It causes a a cloud of chaos damage on the ground. I don't have a bow or I'd show you, but it was a little cloud of chaos damage on the ground. And this is going to allow us to clear most all the way up to about level 38 with no problem whatsoever. You slot this with pierce and the cool thing about it is, is that each enemy that it pierces is going to cause another cloud to drop on the ground doing the full amount of damage. Now, after that, we're gonna get our movement abilities. We use flame dash. That's just the standard movement skill for most builds that I play, especially if they're casters. This build also does use whirling blades just to apply fortify and to help us move around a little bit. It. You can use smoke mine as well while you're leveling if you know how to do the smoke mine jump trick. And then at level 12, we're going to get two abilities. The first one and the important one they're going to get for leveling is Toxic Rain. Toxic Rain is going to be our single target damage ability. You're going to link this with Mirage Archer and you're mainly only going to use it on really tough rares, blue packs that are really like tanky or bosses. For everything else, Caustic Arrow is going to be the go-to. This is going to take you all the way up to 38. Now you also do want to pick up Blade Vortex at this point because when we hit 38 and we grab the Unleashed Gem that I talked about earlier, which is here. As soon as we have access to this at 38, you're going to want to switch over to Blade Vortex because it's going to make you do a ton more single target damage. And I also just think it's more fun. You can continue with Toxic Rain and Caustic Arrow all the way up until maps if you really want to. And you could probably just stick with those and just do that build and use all the same stuff that I have in here. It really wouldn't be very much different. But you're, wanna, you're going to want to grab Blade Vortex. You're going to want to level it up. You're also going to want to look for a Vol Blade Vortex. You can do the Vol side zones. Vol Blade Vortex is really useful. You might have seen me use it in the map example that I did. You just pop it. It's basically a independent blade vortex that just runs around and tries to chase stuff down. You want to look for that in some vault side zones early on. After that, you're or you are going to get access to a couple of auras. You're going to get access to Skitterbots and you're going to get access to Herald of Agony. Herald of Agony is not actually useful early on, but you do want to level it up in the beginning. And Summon Skitterbots is super useful for the entirety of the game. We actually use this for the entirety of the game. It causes enemies to be chilled and it causes enemies to be shocked, it causes us to do a bunch more damage and just give us a little bit of defenses because the enemies are chilled. Herald of Agony is something you're going to use when you swap over to Poison Blade Vortex. 
Now, when you hit 24, you're going to get access to two things as well. Plague Bearer, that's the little poison aura that I told you guys about. You're just going to link uh, Plague Bearer to increase area of effect. If you can, you should also link it to Empower. I don't even have it linked to Empower here. It would be significantly stronger linked to like a level four Empower or something like that. An increased area of effect is enough. A note about Plague Bearer, you can't actually link damage modifiers to this. It doesn't do anything. The only things that really work are things like increased area of effect or empower and things like that. Like gem levels are the main things that are going to help you there. The other thing that you're going to get is malevolence. Now you may not be able to run malevolence very early on just because of mana problems, but as soon as you can run malevolence as well as skitterbots, as well as Herald of Agony, you probably should. I personally would level with um, Herald of Agony and Skitterbots after you get to Blade Vortex. That's pretty much it for the skills and the things that you need to look out for while leveling. Let's talk a little bit about the items that you should be looking for when you're very, very early on in leveling in the first couple of acts. All right, so my game crashed and I had to reload it. That's been happening quite a bit, actually. But anyways, the main thing that you want to be looking for when you're in the first couple of acts is going to be three links and four links. So this build is going to sustain most of its damage off of its links. It doesn't actually worry too much about items. It doesn't worry too much about any of the mods that you can get on wands and such. They are still useful and I'll talk about those here in a moment, but it's mainly the links. You're going to want to be looking at these vendors and trying to get green and blue links, mainly green links early on because Caustic Arrow and Toxic Rain both use a lot of projectile and green gems to do their damage. So you're really gonna to wanna to be looking for three links and four links on that. You're also going to want to be looking for movement speed boots. Something that a lot of people don't realize is that moving faster means that you're going to make it through the axe faster. You spend like 99% of your time leveling walking. So you should be walking faster. Make sure that you're using your flame dash and your smoke mine if you know how to do it to keep yourself moving faster through the axe. Now, when it comes to weapons, I talked about wands, right? Now you can pick up pretty much any early wand that you want to. It can be a carved wand, driftwood wand, goat wand, whatever it is. The lower the eye level of the wand all the way down to about three is actually Actually better so I'm gonna show you guys what I mean here now I'm gonna have to actually find my alterations so give me just a second here so I'm gonna grab a couple alterations here and you guys are gonna see what I'm talking about so unless I get horrifically unlucky it is pretty easy to roll some crazy mods on these low-level wands now you see most of the stuff that I'm rolling here is actually useful you're gonna see lots of damage you're gonna see lots of damage over time multiplier there you go if you're playing my creeping frost build this would be an awesome one and I got it off of like five alterations you can keep going plus one to level of all lightning spell gems that'd be good for my archmage build it's it's kind of ridiculous how easy it is to roll a really really solid wand early on Added fire damage to spells. Added fire damage is really good for leveling with Stormblast Mine early on. 20% spell damage, added lightning damage to spells. You can kind of get my drift. Now, there is one modifier that you're mainly looking for on this build, and that is going to be the Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier. Now, keep in mind, rolling a wand like this is only useful once you've swapped over to Blade Vortex. Before that, you're just going to be using whatever bow. So I want to tell you a little bit about the bow as well. Okay. Now, the best bow that you can possibly get, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to see it here. Welcome. Best bow that you can possibly get is a four link short bow. Now here it is right here. No, that's a crude bow. Oh, it actually has attack speed on it though. So it's, it's, it's similar, but the best bow that you're looking for is a four link short bow early on. The only thing that matters is attacks per second. So what I would suggest that you do is when you find a short bow, just grab that short bow, doesn't matter if it's white or anything else, and try to craft Stay attack shot. speed on it if you can. As soon as you get to act two, you're gonna get access to your hideout. You're gonna get that through Helena. The quest that's over here in the Chamber of Sins, when you save Helena, she's right here, she's going to allow you to choose a hideout. You can see that, right? So when you go to that hideout, you're going to have access to this crafting bench here. This crafting bench is gonna allow you to craft attack speed, and you'll see here, the lowest level attack speed requires 24. So as soon as you're able to get attack speed on your bow, that's all that you really need to do damage. If you were able to get a chaos damage over time multiplier attack speed bow, that would probably be good enough to not even switch over to Blade Vortex for quite some time. However, as I said, when you do hit 38, it is pretty easy to roll just some chaos damage over time multiplier. There you go. That was what, like 20, maybe 20 something alterations. I don't know how many I grabbed, but like, there you go, right? We got Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier. You could regal this and craft spell damage or anything else on it. Uh, so we would regal this, right? Oh, it gave us spell damage already. I mean, it, we, we kind of got lucky there, but you could craft basically whatever you want on this, right? Increase damage over time. You get that at level 24. Anything would be good for once you actually get to Blade Vortex. Now, another thing about the crafting bench is that you can actually craft 
resists here. And if you're having issues with resist early on, you'll see here at level 12, that's super early. That's like act one. So you can use these as soon as you make it to Helena. You can craft up to 20 resist, a 20 fire, cold, or lightning on any piece of gear. You've got like 10 pieces of gear here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, you've got 10 slots of gear that all can have 20 resist craft on them for a single transmutation orb. So, I mean, that's up to 200 of any resist that you want, right? And you only need like 75 of each one. So, I mean, that could help you get almost all of the resist that you need for the entirety of the game just by crafting some low resist on your pieces of gear. And as you level up, you're going to get access to higher ones as well. So, make sure that you're checking for your resistances, keeping them up at around 75 at all times, and making sure that you're not, you know, dying instantly to one shots because you're not itemizing for life properly and itemizing for resists properly. It's really important for while you're actually trying to do your league start. So now the last thing that I want to talk about is the path of building. Uh, path of building is a program that's going to allow you to basically like just test a character and change all the different little variables, I highly suggest that you go down into the description below this video, you download the Path of Building Community Fork link down there. It's updated by the Path of Exile community. The program was made by a guy who works at GGG. You don't really have to worry about it whatsoever. And there is a paste bin link down there that you should grab, import, and you can check everything about this build. So we're gonna jump over into the Path of Building so I can show you a couple of things about the build. And yeah, let's go. Okay, so over here in the Path of Building, I spend a ton of time on these, like legitimately, I spend a ton of time getting all of this as well crafted as I possibly can. If you have questions of any sort, this is the place that you should really be going first. When you first install Path of Building, it is going to look like this. So you're going to see that it's going to just open up a screen right here. You're going to come up to the top, you're going to hit new, you're going to go up to the top left here and you're going to hit import. You're gonna click import from pastebin and you're gonna paste that pastebin link that's down in the description below this video right now into there. Once you do that, it's gonna load you directly up into my build. This is the Poison Blade Vortex Assassin. This build has everything in it. This path of building has everything that you're going to need. It's got multiple leveling trees. I've updated these for the new leveling method that I spoke to you guys about. You have the leveling trees up to 35. We've got 55, 70 plus all the skill points, the end game, and then the full complete tree. It also tells you which ascendancy points that you should be getting first. So you can check out which ascendancy points and what order you're supposed to be getting. It's It's got most everything that you need, right? So just follow this when you're actually looking for the skill tree and what points to get early while leveling. Make sure that you're grabbing life when you need it and damage when you need it. I also also do have full skills here. You're going to see there's leveling skills, including links in the order that you should be going for them. So like for Cossack Arrow example, if you have a two link, you should be going for Pierce. If you have a three link, you should be going for Void Manipulation. If you have a four link, you should be going for Vicious Projectiles. That goes for all of this stuff here, right? You should just be going for all of the stuff that you can get here. Use all of the skills that are in this list. Any extras that you can add from the extra things down here, feel free to pop them in there. I tried to put everything that I could in here. Um, if, if say you were leveling with a tabular or something, just use the end game links. It should be perfectly fine or whatever works for your ability. I also do have multiple item sets. I've got my gear, which is the pretty cheap stuff that you saw in game earlier. This is just like 50, 60 chaos worth of gear. I also do have like super unobtainable high tier end gear, like a corrupted six link like Kintsugi with plus two to socketed duration gems and some like despair corrupted gloves. If you're looking to do like a ton of damage and you want to invest like a hundred exalts into the build, look at this. It'll give you some pretty crazy numbers. I mean, doing 19 million DPS. And honestly, I could probably get this higher if I did some crazy crafting and used the everything else that I, I probably could, but this is about as far as it goes. I mean, we've got corrupted cold iron points and all kinds of that. And the last thing is the notes section. I spend a lot of time making sure that these notes have pretty much everything that you need, okay? So these notes have frequently asked questions for if you have some kind of just common question that you don't know the answer to, all of it's in there. It's got leveling information. It's got how to play the build. It's got the configuration and why I choose the things that I do. Um, I've got as much information as I could pack into here. I've done my best, right? So if you have questions, make sure that you go and look in these note sections first before you go anywhere else, because it should be in here. All right, guys, so that is the Poison Blade Vortex Assassin, a really, really powerful build, probably one of my top choices for League Start. Now, remember, if you have questions, make sure that you go into the the path of building, check out those notes, check down in the comments, check in the description. If none of that works for you, make sure to join my Discord channel. It is linked down below at the top of the description. It's where myself and all of my mods and a bunch of helpful community members hang out. We can answer your problems, answer your questions, all kinds of stuff that you have. You can come hang out with me and the boys. If you got questions, that's the best place to go. Come join us over on Discord. We've got like six, we're at like 1600 members now. We've been growing super fast recently. I'm pretty sure the last time I mentioned this, we were at a thousand and now we're at 1600 plus. So uh, get in boys. I mean, the 
and we're, we're hanging out, we're chilling, we're having fun. Remember guys, if you enjoy my content, like this video so the more people can see it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this, and stay safe out there in Ray Class, and I'll see you guys in 3.12 Ice League.